Hello, Matthew Williams here with a quick video to say I'm in Bath and I'm on an exploratory mission. Um, a lovely chap by the name of Oliver Wright is going to give me a hand and he's going to show me his Mavic. And his Mavic will be dialed in with the stock settings and we're going to see whether or not it looks rough. And then we're going to try and use some magic settings to see if we can get it smooth. <laughs> Okay, the settings are, if you don't want to watch the rest of the video, you have to have in your expo for the yaw is 0.2. End point adjustment needs to be down at 50. And your gimbal setting, there is a special feature called smooth track. <laughs> I have to remember it then. And that needs to be really about 30. Uh, possibly 20 or 30 you decide um, and the overall speed of the tilt in the gimbal settings needs to be 30 40 or 50 you decide but definitely the smooth track adjustment needs to be on so anyway now we talk about <laughs> I'm cycling into town early to meet up with a guy that emailed me on YouTube Uh, I want to do a couple of flight tests with the Mavic. So this is today's setup. Got more tripods than I care to care for. This is Matthew. We've been doing the test with him. This is. Uh... Positive news. I have seen the Mavic. I have actually held it in my hand. Um, I haven't flown it but somebody who owns it has flown it and I can give you the good news. I have the settings that you need in order to tame down the Mavic for more cinematic filming. Of course, if you're not into cinematic filming and you just want to take it out of the box and fly it, it will fly and it will go and be quite rough. But if you want cinematic flying, these are the settings that you will require. And then if you can be bothered to find out why they're that way, watch the rest of the video, which will include some clips of me meeting a guy called Oliver Wright he said I had some pretty good settings um, in Bath and he was very kind to come out and show me his Mavic and we'll do that at the end. Here's the settings and why they are actually important. Right, first off, Expo and Gains. This is what everyone told me you would re be required to set. Expo. What Expo does, and I'll, I'll give you the gain um, information in a second. What Expo does, if you've got a controller, when you push the stick you get a deflection which is linear curved. Okay. If you put exponent it means that it starts off gradual and then it gets stronger as it goes along. So it means that this area is more sluggish and gives you less control. Okay. But by the time you get up here to the end it gets punchy again. Okay, so the trouble is with the Expo is that it's okay in this region, but once you start moving a little bit further across, it'll start getting very twitchy again, and um, in fact more twitchy because the curve, the curve goes back up at the end. So you know it can be almost you know once you get past a certain line, you're going to get really twitchy. You know, so that's the only thing with Expo. So yes you have to dial your expo down to 20 percent which is known as 0.2 okay 0 0.20 in your settings you need that okay that's going to make it a little bit more sluggish in the middle which is what you want but here's the thing the setting that nobody told me about and is extremely important and i was relieved when i found it was there <laughs> is called end point adjustment or endpoint limitation. That,
basically means that when you push your stick, even with Expo dialed in, Expo in or not, if you push your stick to the right, you get 100%. If you push it to the left, you get negative 100%, which is what you expect. 100% minus 100%. So it's 100, 100, okay? Now the endpoint limiter says, look, if you push this all the way to the right, just give me maybe 30%. And if you push it to the left, give me 30%. So it basically takes out all that fast range you don't want. It takes it out, okay? So then when you've got the Expo dialed in, now it's going to be more like three quarters of that is going to be giving you more in the 20% range. And the last little bit will give you that 10% faster because it starts to get faster when you get near the end with the Expo. But the large area in the middle is now quite sluggish, which is what you want. Sluggish is good, because trust me, any movement on the Mavic is actually capable of giving you quite a bit of input to your copter. So I'd consider that a fast turn, so three millimeters really, we don't want to go much beyond that. So, so you want to keep it as slow and as sluggish as possible, and trust me, you do not want to be turning the copter like this because the footage is going to look hectic okay you want to be turning the copter like this cinematic and if if you if you're chasing somebody on a bike or a car yeah okay you might want to turn the copter like that then you know but if you're just wanting to just gracefully look around the landscape it's got to be slow so having sluggish controls means that you can basically ease off and stop the shot and ease in and ease off but how could you do that without those two controls, the Expo and the Endpoint Limitation? Because if you're doing that, or doing that to get smooth, let's face it, your finger's going to twitch and you're going to get smooth, fast, slow, slow, fast. So that's why you need Endpoint Limitation and Expo. Yeah. Okay, so this is 20% um, uh, Expo, normal speed mode, cameras are recording and this is one millimeter so it's um full turn all the way so just hold him right you could oh that's going to take forever isn't it yeah that is very slow christ i don't know if we've got enough time to, to do that no uh that is very slow yes that is right. okay so we'll say one millimeter is too slow let's try two millimeters it's not even worth a test no no it's very good I like what I'm seeing with, with one millimeter. <laughs> it's just can anybody actually physically control it to one millimeter accuracy? That's the thing. Yeah. All right, this is two millimeters. This is a full 360. Are you pushing up against the edge? Yeah. Yeah, you are. Okay. It'll take a long time as well. Yeah. All right, let's just not, let's not do the full thing, but that's a good example of the speed at two millimeters. Let's try three millimeters. Okay, so ready, to, ready to go on three millimeters. Okay, that's three millimeters. So it's probably a good speed. That's not a bad speed actually. So that's about the magic speed. So let's go all the way around on that one. So three millimeters is where it starts on twenty percent expo. Now tilt which on mine I have moved it used to be it used to be a control that was I think about there like this one right but it's just too hard it's, it's really hard um, to, to sort of like take your hands off the controls and play with stuff around here when you're trying to fly because you even with your thumb you know can you uh, get up there and it's the same with the Mavic okay the Mavic Mavic's a slightly smaller controller Back to the original position but if you're if you're operating it with fingers and thumbs it means you've got to get your finger around here onto the control to play with it okay to get the tilt to go up and down on the camera now that means that your fingers are coming off 
the controls to do this and it means that you're going to be doing one control and not the other and that's bullshit now I couldn't stand that so I physically took my controller apart and my magic my magic weapon um, which I love I've got to say it myself I love this is my big control yeah it's basically one of these controls okay but it's just got a rubber it's got an eraser an oval shaped razor and I bored a hole and stuck it on the top and it means it's huge so it means that lots of movement here transmits, translates to a small amount there if I made it even bigger then I'd have to move it loads to get a small amount of movement there which is better okay so of course I'm flying and now whilst I'm doing fingertip controls I can just go tilt down and see there's no spring return okay there's no spring return so I can do this and I can start a tilt in yeah and I can keep flying and concentrating the tilt is happening now on the on the camera very slowly okay and then I can just stop it and I can do that smoothly okay so this is the best ergonomic position for the tilt not up there sorry DJI you I've put it in a crap place and it's a very small control so basically any little movement will send it going too fast okay DJI have got a speed limiter so they say right okay what speed would the maximum speed be if you move that control and 10 is too slow 20 and 30 seem to be about right um, it's set at 50 normally which is a bit too fast um, t between 20 and 30 and then full deflection will be going in quite quick and a little bit will be just about right and you could maybe hold that whilst flying you know and just hold it in the full position which means that you could probably do that with this f this finger you know which is not going to be easy whilst you're trying to do finger and thumb controls some people do thumbs hey another thing is these sticks on here elevate you can unscrew them and they elevate the higher they elevate the easier it is to control now on the Mavic unfortunately they're molded on there's no ability to lift them up as far as I can see I might be wrong there's no way to lift them up but that's not a problem because somebody will design or you can design yourself something that will just slip over the top like this like this pen thing here will just slip over the top and make them taller and as if they're taller that does the same trick I mean literally you could just put a pen top bit of blue tack bit of blue tack on there just put a pen control pen thing and hey presto you've now got a longer stick longer stick smoother control okay so that's what I found out about the Mavic now the tilt has one secret weapon and the secret weapon should be on the yaw as well I believe but DJI at the moment have only put it on the tilt and this secret weapon is called smooth track and it it makes the um, if you if you put a rough command in it doesn't matter because it'll smoothly move up to the speed you've selected and if you stop it by a rough command off it'll keep moving until it stops okay so it allows it allows you to be rough with a tilt and it'll smooth it out for you okay so smooth tracks what you want and it needs to probably be on 20 or 30 okay any more than that and it will take a very long time for it to get up to the speed you want of the tilt and, and if you let go it'll probably keep on going way past the point that you wanted it to stop at <laughs> everyone said gains 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 don't do anything okay so forget gains okay gains are about what happens imagine this is the drone right and it's designed to hover in one place if I push it with my hand if I put my hand on it and I go push it's how it returns back okay so if I push it it will try and come back and it'll push it it'll come back it'll, it'll fight the fight the command I'm putting in with my hand physically to the drone okay now if you turn your gains down gains down okay what will happen is if I push it it'll keep going it'll go and slowly stop that's with the gains down you don't want that that's wrong because that means that the wind can blow it out of the way and it'll never recover 
if you have your gain set too high it means it'll come back too much so if it was there and I push it it comes back beyond the starting point okay because it's got too much gain and what tends to happen then is the brain gets confused in the copter and it goes well I wasn't actually there yeah I was there so it goes well I've got to come back and then it puts a command it, it automatically tries to come back and it goes well I've gone too far again because it's got too much gain I've gone too far again and I've gone too far again uh, and this is what they call twitching okay that's with the gain set too high so too low it's going to drift off okay too high it's going to twitch okay so what you have to find is the perfect balance where if you push it it comes back and stops push and come back and stop that's gains so gains has nothing to do with this and you shouldn't play with your gains if you don't know what you're doing the only reason you should change your gains is if you add more weight to the copter you extend the length of the arms of the copter right then you play with the gains otherwise leave them at the factory setting so you have to experiment with that but there are smooth features there so that out of the way let's have a look at the experiments we did with um, uh, Oliver Right, so uh, Oliver's offered to help us out today, so we're going to do the, some tests and uh, Oliver Wright's channel's link's going to be in below, probably somewhere about here. So uh, go over to his channel and uh, subscribe. All right, Matthew, thank you very much. Thanks Enjoy this video. <laughs> so what we're seeing now is Oliver setting up his Mavic and when he powers it on, it'll do a little self-check where the, the yeah. blades turn just very slightly. And uh, what we're going to do here is a number of checks whereby and here he is just about to take off and uh, we're going to do a load of checks whereby we're going to show with a calibrated measuring system the calipers here and I put that around the sticks in the zero position so dead in the center and then we measure up one millimeter two millimeters and three millimeters so here's the turn on the old settings with one millimeter of movement and as you can see it turns quite quickly now let's have a look what happens when we've got the one millimeter with the new smoothed settings can you see how much slower that is now this is two millimeters on the old setting it's going quite fast that's probably the limit that your eyes can take to absorb information when you're filming. Okay, now this is the new settings for two millimeters. And as you can see, a lot more cinematic. So this is three on the old settings and three is just crazy speed. This is almost like FPV flying. But have a look at three on the new dialed in setting. Now three millimeters, see how much smoother it is? Three millimeters is in fact half the travel of the thumb. So side by side, old and new, on the left hand side we've got the original settings which are way too fast and on the right hand side we've got the new settings. So let's have a look. So on the left way too fast, that's the original settings, half stick across and on the right hand side half stick is giving you a very sedate experience so here we are look at this this the white balance changes between the beginning of the scene and this is too fast and then this is a much slower more sensible speed but what what you may not have noticed is that um, the automatic white balance was on now now we've got more of the buildings the white balance settles down uh, but when you had loads of the green before it was turning some of these buildings and making them look blue that's the end. This is the beginning of the shot. That's the end. And here's a side by side where you can see the big difference. And here's the reason why because he panned up from a big green shot which pushed everything blue. 
and then of course it was unsettled all across the, the rest of the shot because he was panning up from a green and the automatic white balance is trying to get rid of all that green and pushing blue in and then by the end of the shot it comes back in so you can see automatic white balance is not your friend makes it very hard to color grade so turn it off and set it to native because if you're a professional you're going to be color grading it later anyway now here we see a shot where the automatic exposure has been used. Again, automatic exposure is not your friend. What it's done here is overexposed the roofs on the cars. So they're very bright and burnt out. And even if you turn the exposure down in post-processing, you probably wouldn't be able to regain that data. So always expose for the lightest point in the scene, which is usually going to be a sky. Set your exposure levels for the sky, then film accordingly and just keep it set at that level for the sky or if at very worst turn your exposure value your EV value down one or two stops and this might prevent you getting some burn but let's have a look at what happens here now when the camera pans up the horrible automatic exposure thing which is so prevalent on DJI's goes dick 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 so as we move the camera up watch it now it'll go in stages it'll go dick 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 as it adjusts and this is what you don't want you don't want automatic exposure ready dick 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 tick 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 and it settles you see now if you'd set it for the sky it would have stayed the whole time and basically it's better to let things underneath go darker than have the sky burned out when you come up so set it for the sky and then you can pan down all you want and you're not going to have that nasty little tick 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 effect otherwise very nice flying very nice footage from mr oliver but got to turn those automatics off and here's another shot which is certainly smooth and looks lovely from a flying point of view but the sky is a bit bright and everything's a little bit punchy it has that video quality as opposed to the film quality um, so certainly nothing wrong with the flying and it's all very exciting but there's automatic white balance has now changed because there's a lot of green in the scene and there's automatic exposure on which means it's blowing out all the whites of the sky so have a look at what you can do when you grade it so that's my interpretation of what you can do you can bring the sky back in a little bit in post-production but it's always best to film it a little bit darker in manual and keep the white balance on manual as well so that you don't have to chase it in post-production and um, and one final money shot really nice but the colors are out so let's sort that out bang there's the colors back in and that was way too fast it's very hard for the brain to catch up when you're panning around at that speed and here's an example of what you could do if you wanted to give the audience a chance to catch up with their brains and soak in the image this is the cinematic speed and an absolutely luscious tilt down, very slow, giving us time to embrace the image and to scan around with our eyes. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks very much for watching. Thanks very much for Oliver for helping out. And it just might give you one or two little tips as to how to get that cinematic look. Smooth pans, smooth, turns smooth tilts and for goodness sake manual white balance manual exposure and set those things before you go for your flight and you will get much much easier times in editing later on and color grading so my name is Matthew Williams if you like this video thumbs up and don't forget to like and subscribe to Oliver's channel as well because he's a really good guy so thanks very much for watching